Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, as you can see, I am wearing my David by Michelangelo t-shirt. And that's because today we're gonna take design to a whole nother level. We're gonna take it to the art level. I'm gonna show you how to create these amazing animations in Figma using nothing but smart anime. Now, if you want to follow along and if you want to download the Figma file, you can head over to uxlab.academy and create a free account. And in there, once you land on your dashboard, once you log in, you'll see this tab called tutorials. And in there, you're gonna see this tutorial alongside with the file that you need if you want to create the animation with me now. I'm just gonna put all the tutorials there so if you don't have an account yet make sure to create one it's completely free it doesn't cost you anything and then that's where I'm gonna put all the files so I don't get them lost in Drive, Dropbox or other places. So with that being said, let's get started. Now the key thing when creating these types of animations is to start with a page that already has all the elements that you need on it. And from that point, you can either add to that screen or subtract from it. That's kind of like the rule of thumb that I'm using. So usually I use screens that already have all the elements that I need on that particular design. And from that point on, I start doing the animation. So if you look at this file, you will see that I've created this kind of like collection view where I have these free images I have a big title over here and also a page counter and some indicators on the bottom alongside with a navigation and some arrows that will help the user navigate now the only preparation that I've done to my design is that if you look closely here to my heading you'll see that this is actually a frame that has the clip content on and inside of that I have the free texts that I will be switching when I will create the animation. And I'm gonna show you how you can use this technique to switch the text and to make it look good. And I did the exact same thing for the page number. But besides that, all of these elements are normally created using auto layout, so there's nothing special done to them. The only two elements that have something special is this kind of like heading over here and the page counter here. And I use the exact same technique, so I have a frame, and inside that frame I have either two or three texts. Now to start animating, all you need to do is to just duplicate this frame and start changing the elements that you would like to animate. So for my example, what I would like to do is I would like to change this heading from collection to start here. So I will select these three texts over here and by holding down shift and using my arrow keys, I'm gonna just switch these texts so that now instead of collection, I will have start here. Then what I would like to do is I, I would like to leave all of these cards alone. But what I would like to do is that I would like this to be kind of like the background image before you actually land on the collection page. So I'm just gonna drag this all over my screen so that now this kind of like looks like a background. And what I would like to do is these elements over here, I would like to hide them so they, they only show once you go on the collection page. So to do that, all you need to do is just literally select these elements and then if you go here on the right panel where we have the layer, just put their opacity to zero and that basically will just hide these. Now, if you want to create other types of animations, you can do that as well. So for example, let's say that I don't want this to fade in when uh, the user lands on the collection list. What I can do is to simply just select these two and again using shift and the arrow keys, just take this off frame and also what you can do is to even drop the opacity to zero so this way it will go into the frame but in the same time it will uh, raise its opacity from zero to 100 so the animation will look a lot smoother. And same thing we will do for this uh, navigation, for this uh, these dots over here. I'm just gonna drop the opacity to zero. And now this will be my initial screen. And literally this is all you need to do to basically create really cool animations. Now, another thing that I forgot to do is if I click on this image, I would like to change, change the border radius because here I have a 10 pixel border radius. So I'm gonna change this to zero so that we don't, so that the image basically fits uh, perfectly on my screen. 
And now the only thing that I need to do is just animate this. And the way you do it is that, for example, let's say that I would like the user to click on this and then afterwards go on this page. I will just select the element, go to my prototype, and then just drag an interaction from this to my next frame. And here is where the magic actually happens, because if you just leave it as it is, and if you just put instant, but let's say you just put it on smart animate, if you go and also, yeah, let's change this starting point to my first page. Now, if we play this prototype right now, you will see that if I click on it, the interaction doesn't look that good. It's kind of like weird. So what we need to do is to go back and here where we have this smart animation, instead of actually leaving things as they are, we should go here instead of ease out, just go and create the custom Bezier. And this curve, basically what it does, it allows you to customize how the animation is being done. So here, just set this to 3000. That means 3000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to three seconds. And here where you have these ends, just create an S curve. What this will do is that it will start the animation slowly, then it will ramp up the speed of the animation, and then it will slowly fade out. So that's kind of like that S curve. And this, if you use this, these settings, then you're gonna get the smooth animation that you saw in the presentation. So now if I play again my prototype, you'll see that if I click on start here, the animation is a lot smoother and it's a lot better than just using the normal settings. So that's kind of like the secret on creating these smooth animations. Now to create the second part of the animation, we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did with our first one. So if we go back to our designs, we're just gonna select our frame, copy this and this will be our third screen. Now what I would like to do at this screen is to kind of like make these cards fade away or disappear on the top of the page and then if you look here at my design you will see that I have the secondary image that I've hidden here in the frame that has a zero opacity and it's here at the bottom. So I would like this to take over the entire screen similar to what I have here at my uh, kind of like landing page. And then I would like to change the number of the page and also the heading. So I'm gonna start with the heading. I'm just gonna select this. I'm gonna select my layers, again, holding shift on your keyboard and using your arrows, just change this to the new text. So the new 911. And I will do the exact same thing for the page number. Select these two, shift, up arrow, change this to number two and here I also have these dots that I created using auto layout so all I need to do is to basically just take this active one and just drag it on my second step so that will kind of like animate and it will look really cool you'll see and that's pretty much it what I want to do from uh, these elements and then Obviously, I would like these cards to kind of like go on the top of the page, so just disappear. So what I will do, I will slightly change the angles so that they kind of like stack on top of each other. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for this one. I'm just gonna stack them like this. Same for this one. I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna select all of them. And using again, shift and the arrow keys, and by selecting all of them, sorry. And by using shift and the arrow keys, I'm just gonna put them at the top of the screen. And then I'm gonna change the opacity for all of them from 100 to zero. Now, all I need to do is to grab this image that was previously hidden, put the opacity back to 100, and then just make it as big as my screen. Now a pro tip that I will give you is you'll see that sometimes because I'm using Unsplash to create these, uh, like to put this, these images. So sometimes, I don't know why, but the resolution is very poor. So when you have things like this, when you see that the image is very pixelated because it was small previously, what I will suggest you to do is just go in and using Unsplash, just 
re uh, put the image in. So just go to Unsplash, search for example for Porsche. Uh, yeah, if I can spell that correctly, that is. And then look for the image that you used previously. So in my case, it's this one. Make sure you have the correct layer selected and just hit this one and this will replace the image with the high resolution one. Not sure why Figma does this, but if you ever have this issue, just use Unsplash or just re-put the image into your frame and that should fix the problem. And now pretty much that's it. All I need to do is to connect these with Smart Animate, similar as I did previously. So if I click on this element, go to prototype and just drag an interaction back to my collection list, you will see that these test settings that I previously created were saved. So now I don't need to basically do anything. I just need to drag the interactions that I want and the animations will be automatically created. So from this one, I want to go here. And from this one here, I would like to go back to the top, to the start. And I will, every single time you do this, just make sure that you have the correct settings uh, in place. And that's it. Now you can just go play your prototype and you'll see that everything is running smoothly. You see this coming up. And then afterwards, if we go back to like to the next page, you will see that these changes, the number page uh, changes as well. And also this uh, dot over here has the scroll animation where it swaps the place from the first one to the second one. And literally this is how easy it is to create these amazing animations using Smart Animate. You don't need to do anything. You don't need After Effects. You don't need any softwares. It's just done in Figma. And now that you know this, you can use these techniques to uplift your portfolio and just use these animations in your own design. And you don't need to create these in CSS, HTML or to code them. You can simply just create a prototype, add a link, put it in your portfolio so that people know and will see what you can do in Figma using Smart Anime. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'm gonna see you in the next video pretty soon. And uh, till then, take care, happy designing. And if you do any of these crazy animations, make sure to share them in the comments. Let me see what you can create because I'm super excited to see what you guys can create using Smart Animate. See you soon and uh, happy designing. Take care, bye.